So then 1970 rolls around and there was a guy named Joseph Colucci. Tell me about this whole situation. Joe Colucci was married to this girl, Camille. She was pretty hot. And she was having an affair with Shorty's nephew, Tom, my friend, Tommy Spiro. Joe Colucci put it together. He knew it, but he couldn't do anything because he was afraid of Shorty. He went to another guy in the crew named Frankie. And he told Frankie, I need your help. Frankie said, fine. Doing what? He says, I want to kill uh, Shorty, and I want to kill Sammy. So Frankie said, you know, we all knew about the affair. So he says, is this you talking about the thing with your wife? And yeah, but why would you want to kill Sammy? He's not banging your wife. And Shorty, he's the boss. Why would you do that? He said, if I kill Tommy, Shorty will put it together. And who is he going to send? He's going to send Sammy. So if I kill the two of them now, I'll start some confusion. Six months later, I'll kill Tommy. That's his ultimate goal. Hmm. He, he gets this whole plot together. Frankie don't buy it. And he goes directly to Shorty and tells Shorty what he's being asked to do. Shorty goes to Carmine Persico. Carmine Persico goes to Joe Colombo. Joe Colombo gives an order to go back down to do the hit and have this kid Sammy do it. Shorty comes to me, tells me about it, and uh, he said, would you take this hit? And that comes in the life. When you come made, you can't refuse, but as an associate, you could, but you'll be washed out. And I agreed to do it. A whole bunch of nights went by. We were working on it. I never did a hit before. And uh, one night we were out late, after hour clubs, drinking. Three, four in the morning, we left. We went to this cafeteria, famous cafeteria. Uh, they called it famous cafeteria. cafeteria In uh, Brooklyn on 86th Street, when he went down to the bathroom, I told the guys, Tommy, you get in to drive the car. Joe Colucci will sit in the front. I'll sit behind Joe Colucci and Frankie, you sit behind Tommy. We had it planned out perfectly. When he came up, we went out. We were doing just that. But instead, he opened up the, the front. It was a two-door car. And he said, Sammy, don't sit behind me. Sit next to behind Tommy. And I did that. And Frankie sat behind him. We were driving down the block. And um, there was a Beatles song playing. Tommy had it loud, like he, like he's trying to drown out something. I took uh, 38 out. I pulled the trigger and I hit him in the head. He didn't do anything. Didn't even move. I didn't know what the fuck happened. I hit him again. Now his body shook and slid to the side a little bit towards Tommy and sliding down a little bit. Tommy pushed him up a little bit. And uh, I said, go to Rockaway and we'll go dump the body over there out of our neighborhood and lower that fucking radio and open the window. You could smell the fucking powder in the in the air. We did that. When we got to Rockaway, there was nice homes with lawns. It wasn't like Brooklyn. Or it was more residential. I told Tommy, I said, open the door and kick him out. And Tommy's nervous. And Sammy's dead. <laughs> I knew he was panicking. I said, I know he's dead. Frankie opened up the window. He rolled the window down. It wasn't electric windows. He rolled them down. I jumped through the window. I got out. I opened up the door. I put one arm around his neck and one arm around his legs. He was a pretty big guy. 
But dead weight showed me how heavy it could be. Felt like he was a thousand pounds to me. I picked him up, put him on the grass in front of this house, got in the car, my hand hit the seat and was covered with blood. And my hand slid across it. I closed the door. I opened the window. I put the gun out and I shot him three more times in the back. Just to make sure he was dead? Just to make sure he's dead. 